What I thought I would do is show you how to use Microsoft Excel to uh, make a budget. Um, these are good to do because it's got spreadsheet functions in them. You can see we have all our major budget categories here, personnel, supplies, travel, other costs. This might be broken out to, to other things. And then we have our indirect costs down here. Also notice that we have subtotals here. So subtotals just for salaries and wages. You could just label this salaries. It uh, doesn't have to be salaries and, and wages. The fringe benefits, these are things like health and dental and vision and retirement. Um, also need to include in there social security, that type of stuff. Usually you can find out for each type of worker, like a student assistant or whatever from your organization, what is their total fringe benefit package. It might be something like 43% of their salaries. This is a subtotal for supplies. Um, we probably need a subtotal in here for total travel. Um, so we can go ahead and type that in there. Um, and then what's going to happen is this is going to be all of the subtotal for all of the categories up here. This one, uh, this one, this one, and this one. And then we'll be able to put in our indirect costs. So we'll have 25% of this value here, and then we'll get our total. Also notice I have a budget for five years, so I also have bud uh, line item budgets for each line item here. So let's say here, you know, I'm going to have the you know, project director and... Um, you know, they're going to be on it, you know, 10 hours a week um, for 48 weeks um, times, let's say, you know, uh, $60 an hour. And so I'm just going to make up the value here. Let's say it's $24,000. I know the math isn't correct. And then you might have... Um, Know, health educator in here and you need to specify you know you know 1.0 FTE that's full-time equivalent um, so maybe their salary is $55,000 so then what you can do to make a total there is you can um, go ahead and click on uh, auto sum and you can either move this for the cells that you want to use See if I can move it there. And so now it'll say sum D10 through, that's the colon through D11. I click on enter, and that's what that will be there as well. And then let's just say, for example, I had a total supplies of $30. And let's say I had total travel of $100. And, uh, you know, I've got some other costs like, you know, duplicating or whatever. Let's say that's $100 as well. And what I want to do is put the total for all of these there. So what I can do is I can click on auto sum and what I'm going to do is just click on the cell and then I'm going to hold the control key and select all of the cells that I want to want to do. Let me see if I can scroll up here. I don't want to do that cell. Try that again. So I'm going to do this one, this one, this one, scroll up, and this one. Notice I'm not including these because this is already part of the subtotal. And now I can click on enter and you can see there's that value. So 79,230 is 100 plus 100 plus 30 plus 79,000. You can see the function there for that particular cell. It's sum D41, that's cell D41, so D41, and D34, so that's D34, and then uh, D29 and D15. And then you can do the same thing here for like then direct costs, you could write, um, whoops. So you could write something like, um, you could take the value of D41 and you could multiply it by 25%. And then what we'll do is, uh, oh, you need to put the equal sign in there. And then what it'll do is it'll give you that that value there. And then you, for here, you can just sum both of these. So this is kind of just basics on how to use Excel. You need to play around with, with it a little bit and build your competency with Excel. Um, look online if you need help with specific functions. But what you want to make sure you do is have these totals and these subtotals here accurate. And make sure you use the functions rather than just typing the values in because you're going to be making lots and lots of changes to these. I hope this helps.